Welcome back to Comic Book History. Yeah, I haven't done one of these in three months. Uh, because I've been busy doing other stuff like anime and some comic stuff. Other comic stuff. But this one, I decided to do something. I decided to do this one episode on a, a, a comic creator. First one I've done since James Robinson. Though his run was pretty short. His era with Marvel lasted from 2013 to 2017. This one I'm talking about by Michael Bendis, Marvel's one of Marvel's biggest heavy hitters, and who has been with, who was with the company for 18 years. Yes, probably by far one of Marvel's longest tenure writers. But since he left, I would say right now the only two people who've been with the company the longest have been Mark Wade, uh, probably Mark Wade, and probably Jason Aaron. And there's not many heavy hitters left. But you have Wade, Jason Aaron, G. Will Wilson. Of course, you have Charles Shaw, but he's only worked coming the past two years. But only these three creators are the only ones that are still sticking around. Now, Ben does one thing you got to appreciate about the guy. is The guy is a fan. He loves classic stuff. And he loves, like, bringing stuff back. And, yeah, he may do some retcons here and there. But when he started, he was good Bendis. I'm not sure exactly what happened with him, where he started getting really bad with some of his stupid stuff he did. But what books did he work on when he was at Marvel? Oh, he worked on a boatload of comic books. Comic books like Ultimate Spider-Man, a comic he, he did for 18 years. Yeah, he did throw this entire attention, despite the fact the book was restarted like four times. First in 2006, and then in 2009, and then it was restarted again in 2015. Uh, 2014, then it was restarted again in 2015, and now it's going to end its little trip with its memory. You have that, Daredevil, Alias, Avengers vs. Turbo Digital Numbering, and then Volume 4, New Avengers, Volumes 1 and 2, Mighty Avengers, Dark Avengers. Let's see, what else? Um, let's see, he worked on Alt Origins, a uh, bunch of stuff, Dark Reign. He did the first six years of Sacred Warriors. Excuse me. Look, looking at his catalog of books that he's actually done over the course of his eight, of the course of his near twenty year tenure with Marvel, you can pretty much fill a small library with how many series he did over the years. And probably by far his Ultimate Spider-Man stuff is probably the one he's done the longest. Yeah, out of everything he's done. I mean, he's also done Guardians of the Galaxy. He's done all new X-Men, Uncanny X-Men. He did, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, when, when he left Marvel, he had four series he was working on. Invincible Iron Man, Jessica Jones, the Miles Morales Spider-Man book, and Defenders. Defenders recently ended, like, last month after only releasing ten issues. Now, I heard that he was going to end his run with that particular book with issue ten. And I had no idea they were going to end the series there. Jessica Jones at 18, events of Iron Man at 600, and for Spider-Man 240. Spider-Man 240, that was kind of predictable. Uh, same thing with Vince of Iron Man, but as for Jessica Jones and his in 18, that's a bit of a surprise. But, yeah. Let's see what else. He's also responsible for a lot of the big Marvel events over the years. His first big event he did with Disassemble. He also did House of M, Secret Invasion, Dark Reign, Siege. He did AVX. He was one of the several writers for that event. Let's see. His last major event he did do was Civil War II, which is probably by far one of Marvel's worst events over the years. It's even, well, almost as bad as Civil War One, but at least the characters are not acting like complete, at least that you have a character, at least you'll have Iron Man acting like a complete dick to a lot of people, him or Ree Richards or Doctor Strange. As a matter of fact, Doctor Strange was hardly in the event at all. And also, he also had a competitor, basically, when it comes to events. Dan Slott, when Civil War II was happening, Dan Slott was doing Clone Conspiracy, which was a story that got mixed results. Now, a lot of his previous events are really good. Secret Empire, uh, no, Secret, Empire, Secret Invasion, I thought was really good. Dark Reign was handled really well, especially since he did a good chunk of the books. Siege was awesome. House of Man was interesting. I love the concept of it. Ultra reality. 
excuse me, though this is built in the aftermath of Disassembled, which is considered to be one of his worst events he's ever done because he did some he did, he did one of his famous retcons. But in the most part, when it comes to retconning other people's continuity, it wasn't as bad as it was during the last few years. Like, like Al Ewing for Ultimates had a bunch of big plans he wanted to do with Ultimates, but they were axed because of Civil War II. He was not the only one. Uh, Greg Pak basically suffered through this as well, where he revealed that, oh, retconning that, oh, Bruce Banner never lost all of his game rage. He could still turn into Hulk, despite the fact in the book Greg Pak wrote, totally awesome Hulk, he basically was drained of entirely of the game radiation and went to Armadeus Cho, which has been in his body for the past three years. And of course, during Civil War II, Hawkeye killed the Hulk, though two years later, two, it's been two years since his death, and they brought him back. Now, this is one of the many stupid things that Bendis has done over the past six years. That was not the only thing he did, uh, along with you ruining what Al Ewing wanted to do. He also did one of the most stupidest retcons I have ever seen for a character. And still to this day, and it's been three years since they did this stupid retcon, and people are still ticked off at Bendis for doing this. I mean, it wasn't as bad as, let's say, retconning... It, it, it's almost just as bad as retconning the marriage of Spider Mary Jane. Rec outing... Iceman as gay. This is probably by far one of the most stupidest things Ben this has ever done when he ever when he worked on the X books. He only worked on two of them. He worked on all new X Men, which was a good series up until its final issue. Final issue was terror was aside from the retcon, it was a good issue. His and Kenny X-Men was actually pretty interesting. I kinda liked it, though his six hundred issue was disappointing. I'm still kind of hoping that his 600 issue friends from Iron Man is not disappointing as that. Plus, also he removed Tony Stark from the events of Iron Man book and replaced to replaced him with Riri Williams, who became Iron. I have no now. This is only the second time I've seen him do this, where instead of killing off a character, and replacing it with a different character while continuing the same title. In the case of Stark, he had him knocked into a coma. Which he's gonna get out. Which, as far as I know, he's gonna have right now. Excuse me. But in the case of well, from what I've heard, from how people treated, how he created black characters, like when he revealed Miles Morales, this got a pretty good reception from Miles Morales. In the case of Riri, this got a negative reaction. I have personally no problem with the character, but at least he created the character. At least the character should have prior to becoming, well, prior to her putting on the armor. In the case of Miles, he just randomly put on the costume, but yet people didn't have a problem with him, even though he's based upon an actual life actor. In the case of Riri, I have no idea who the heck she's based upon. But let me think, what else? Well, he's also he's also been compared to being Marvel's Jeff Johns, where he loves doing retcons. And, of course, he loves doing big, epic events. And also, he loves a bunch of shock factor. He does death for shock value. Like, in Siege, he ki he had Ares get killed by the century by being ripped in half. In a two-page spread. Yeah, I I, ha I own the trade of it. It's, it. it's a good event. Now, I have no problem with Sentry killing Ares. Fine, whatever. The guy was going nuts anyways. But the way he did it really bothered me. Still to this day, after eight years after they then came out, it still bothers me how he did it. He ripped him in half from pulling the side of his head all the way down to his groin. Yeah, and this is done quickly. Thank God it wasn't slow motion. And of course, by the, and then two wishes later, he killed Loki. Yeah, he killed Loki, and though Loki came back later on. Century, of course, made dead for at least for two years for Rick and Brian back. And, of course, he's not the only character he's killed off while being in the in, in the other books. Aside from killing him off and, of course, killing off the Hulk, he also had War Machine get killed by frickin' Thanos by being vaporized. He also had the Jester, a character he kind of worked on when he was working on the well, Daredevil. He had him get shanked in prison. Yeah, off panel of all things. 
Though nobody bothers to talk about that death. No, people talk about the death of War Machine and the Hulk. Though I think bringing back the Hulk is a good idea, because I think that killing out Bruce Pan is probably one of the worst things that Bendis has ever done when he's worked at Marvel. And of course, he worked on some mini series. I mean, what, probably it's one of the most best ones they did was Avengers Prime, which supposed to take place right after Avengers Siege. I found it a pretty interesting mini series. Now, they work at events like Fear Itself, Original Sin. He did do Age of Ultron, but that was an alternate universe story. The second one he ever did, though in the case of that one, that one did have consequences. House of them did have some consequences as well, like depowering 90% of the mutant population, on slap being resurrected, Wolverine Gala's memories back, and stuff like that. Age of X, Age of Ultron... Excuse me, what were his consequences? Let's see. The timeline getting shattered, and Angela coming to the Marvel Universe. Oh, and by the way, Bendis is the only... Bendis is one of three writers who actually did anything with Angela. I'm not kidding about this. It seems like no one at Marvel wants to do anything with Angela. The only other two people who actually give a damn about this character was Karen Gillian and Margie Bennett for Angela's two ongoing series that she had. Oh yeah, Jason Aaron did briefly have her in a one arc for Thor, but that's it. Though she also did appear in that crossover miniseries, Thor and Loki of the Tenth Realm. But Ben has nothing to do with that. that was Jason Aaron and Karen Gillian. Hmm. Actually, I was Jason Aaron now. You now you are Loki agent Asgard. Uh. For the most part, I really enjoyed every single be event Bendis ever did. Now, somebody might ask, did he do the original Civil War event? No, that was Mark Millar. Yeah, Mark Millar. As far as I know, after that event happened, Mark Millar has since never done a major event for Marvel. Kind of like Matt Frax never did it, never did an event for Marvel after he did Fear Itself. Don Nick Spencer did two. He's done three events now. He done Standoff, Secret Empire, and currently he's doing Damnation. Bendis has probably done the most events at Marvel to date. You want to know events he did? He did House of M, Dissemination. Yeah, he did that. That was the Aftermath thing. He actually had nothing to do with it. He did House of M, Secret Invasion, Dark Reign, Siege, Civil War II. I'm trying to think. Well, oh yeah. Age of Ultron, which was a story he set up for two years. Actually, it was like three years. I'm trying to think, though. What event did he do? Uh, oh, yeah, he did. He did uh, Black Vortex, The Trial of Jean Grey. A lot of really big known events that Marvel has done over the years. I'd say from, from 2004 but to recently, he's done a good chunk of them himself. Though some of the events he just did the tie ins, like Civil War. The first one, he just did New Avengers tie-in. And that was it. Though he did have Daredevil briefly reference the events of Civil War. In the case of event like Fear Itself, he just did the tie-ins for Avengers and New Avengers. Yeah, he didn't do anything else. Now, what Avengers books did he do aside from Avengers and New Avengers? He did Mighty Avengers. He did Dark Avengers, the, the first one. The, the last one they did... When they used the triple digit numbering, the numbering for Thunderbolts, that was done by Jeff Parker. Let's see, where are books do? He did Avengers Assemble, the first eight issues, and he also did Mighty Avengers for the first 20 issues of the series before handing it off to Dan Slott. Yep, Dan Slott. Now, as for any bad series he's ever done, well, aside from Civil War II, which is probably by far the most disappointing event of the entire thing. Now, unlike Secret Empire, which it felt like it had was changing throughout the whole entire thing and having stupid stuff happen in it, Civil War II, I gotta say, it's better than Secret Empire because it would have a consistent tone and pacing throughout the whole thing. I mean, there was stuff built upon it. I mean, yeah, there was there was some stuff that was a couple of retcons, but... At least he didn't change the event halfway through and have the ending change to something like what happened with Second Empire. That's one thing I praised about Civil War too, is that it was a disappointment. In the case of Second Empire, it was just simply bad. 
really bad. Though it did have good artwork. I praise it for that. Fantastic covers. But aside from Civil War II, he generally has done really good events over the years. I would say before Civil War II, I think the last major event he did do for Marvel was Black Vortex. Yeah, he worked on that one. He was one of many writers for that crossover. But that was the last official crossover he did for Marvel prior to doing Civil War II. Excuse me, though. He worked on that crossover with Sam Humphreys, John Lehman, Kelly Sue Honick, Gary Duggan, because he was a writer of Nova at that point. I'm trying to think, though. Who else did he write it with? I think that's it. Yep, only like a handful of other writers. But generally put... Oh, I think he did, I think he was one of the yeah he was definitely one of the writers for Battle of the Atom as well. Of course he did I think he did it like either just before, during, or after he did Age of Ultron. And yes, that was used for the second Avengers film, but the film itself had nothing to do with Age of Ultron itself. I mean, Age of Ultron was a pretty interesting event. I have personal problem with it. I know my friend Tibby doesn't like it that much. Because he found it disappointing. I mean, yeah, Bendis has done shocking things when it comes to his events, but at least it has consequences afterwards. Unlike some events where it didn't really affect the Marvel Universe that much. Civil War II, well, one of its biggest problems was the fact it actually, whenever it interrupted a story, it actually did it very terribly. Where books, I mean, if you read the tie-ins, with the exception of the books that Bendis did, with the exception of his books, Though Jessica Jones nothing to do with Civil War Two. I should point out though that a lot of the books were forced. I mean, if you read the tie-ins, it felt like the tie-ins were very forced. In the case of tie-ins did in the past, they felt very gradual, and they felt like it really expanded upon the story. Civil War Two felt very forced, and by far this is the only event I have ever seen Bendis do where the tie-ins were forced. Where they just had to do it because he probably told one of the he probably told Axel Alonso to tell all the books basically all these books they have to tie into they got to at least have at least a story arc or some kind of tie into Civil War II because Axel Alonso probably told them to do that though he was probably asked to do that by by Michael Bendis. Also, apparently Bendis had this problem where. Apparently, no editor at Marvel in the last few years could could say no to Bendis. Though, that might change over at DC. And hopefully, that DC does not pull the same crap that Bendis... Now, Bendis... Now, in the case of the restart numbering, that was all Alonzo. Bendis had nothing to do with it at all, as far as I can tell. Though, I've never met the guy. I've never asked him about it. I believe that was all actual Alonzo's idea from articles I've read. It was all his idea, the whole constant restarting number one. That was all Axel Angel's idea. Bendis had nothing to do with it at all. Nothing. But, some people also say Bendis has got, uh, toward the end of his tension for Marvel, he got a bit lazy. In some of the books, I can see that. For Defenders, I didn't think so at all. I can think so in the case of Spider-Man, the Miles Morales book, because half the time the book was going nowhere. Yeah, if you read the book, basically, post-Secret uh, secret, uh, secret Wars, it kind of felt as though it took a little while for the book to move forward. And, like, there was some interesting stuff, like, recent, like, having Cable show up in the book completely at random, though that's not been followed up upon, or having Blade show up in Defenders and Vince of Iron Man. No, Defenders was actually made sense because he, of course, according to dialogue, Blade was there to... Repay a favor to Luke Cage. Events of Iron Man. There has never been a reason why he shows up in that book at all. Though it's interesting idea. Though Bendis has never dealt with the supernatural that much. I mean, look at all of his crossovers. They seem very sci-fi based. Sci-fi or semi-reality based. He's never done a supernatural based crossover. Not that I can think of no. The only thing that might come close to that is probably House of M. But aside from that, there's nothing really supernatural about his, about all of his events. Secret Empire was sci-fi, supernatural, and semi-realistic based. That was on Nick Spencer. But also from what I've heard, for the past couple of years, apparently, uh, apparently 
somebody at Marvel, told all the writers at Marvel, uh, somebody higher up, one of Marvel's higher up, told all the writers to keep bashing Donald Trump on Twitter. As far as I know, Bendis never did that at all. I've actually asked a few friends of mine, or my friends of mine, if Bendis ever did that on Twitter. The answer is no. I've actually, I actually currently read his currently tweets right now on my phone, and there's nothing about Bendis at all, about Donald Trump at all in all of his tweets. Mostly put, he's just promoting his, he's just promoting his books, which is a good thing. That's what a writer's supposed to do, aside from writing his damn story. He's supposed to promote the books, which he does a very good job of promoting his books. Unlike some creator, unlike some, unlike Marvel themselves. Now, Marvel half the time doesn't even bother to promote any of their books at all. They just put them on the shelf and be like, hey. Pick this book up because we said so. Ben just bothers to actually put put notice on that he's doing these books, and he also hypes them up, just like how he's hyping up Superman right now. Yeah, if, if you if you get on Twitter right now, he is hyping up his run for Superman, and he said uh, as of right now, I saw on Twitter he just completed the miniseries Man of Steel, his Man of Steel series, before he moves on to his action comics, action comics run and Superman, which it seems bizarre, though, that when he starts Superman, he's restarting the comic number one, even though the book had just restarted number one two years prior. But I'm less upset about that, at least when the case of DC, at least they actually bothered to have books last more than excuse me, 12 or 30 issues before they hit the restart button. Yeah, at least it managed to last for a good about 50 issues. God praise her for that. But in the case of Bendis' books right now, I would say the only book that's ever suffered, ever, ever suffered through, let's say, a restart number one, where it kind of felt as though it was not necessary, is probably his run for Invincible Iron Man, which hit the restart button once the entire time. It's probably by far the only book, aside from Invincible Iron aside from Ultimate Spider-Man, ever hit the restart button. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed, though, about Bendis. At least he allows his books to last for a good period of time before he they, before he ends them. Actually, there's one. There's actually one other book I do. I also kind of forgot this book. There are only three books Ben has ever worked on where they hit the restart button during his during the time he wrote the books, and that's been New Avengers, Ultimate Spider-Man, and Event Spider-Man. That's it. Those are the only ones I can think of he's ever had. Where they hit the restart button during his during the time he was writing the book. A lot of his other books usually last for a good period of time, or at least he leaves partway through the leaves, leaves, leaves the book partway through the book's run, like the Avengers Assemble, where he left it after eight issues, though the remaining sixteen issues were done by Kelly Subhonic. Awesome run, by the way. But uh, aside from that, that's really it for this particular comic uh, comic history, because well. So, if you forget to check out any of Ben Nose's books, I highly recommend check out all of his books he's ever written, because a lot of his books are just really damn good. That's one thing you gotta say about him. He is a good writer. Yeah, he's had a few hiccups over the years, but he's had a really got, got a lot of good hits. I don't know if he's ever made a New York, New York, New York Times best-selling author list. I don't know if he has or not. I know it was basically his trade sold really well. I know because I own a couple of them myself. But, yeah, as I'm going to talk about my next episode, I don't know. I just kind of feel like doing one on Brian Michael Bendis because, well, he just left Marvel. He's about to start up his run for DC. And I kind of want to get my thoughts on his run as a whole. It was a good run. Though, when I started reading comic books, he only worked at he's only, he only worked at Marvel for four years at that point. Because I started reading comic books back in 2004. And that was basically four years into his tenure. Of course, at that point, he was doing Disassembled, he was doing his run for uh, Alias, which is basically the book that started Jessica Jones. Yeah, one of three books. And I should point out, though, Jessica Jones, if you look at basically her entire character history, pretty much I would say about 90% of it is done, is basically all Brian Michael Bendis writer character history. The only time I could think of where he was not doing character history was when she showed up Mighty Avengers by Al Ewing. And of course, she did also make a guest star appearance in a page in for a couple issues of Hawkeye. Good book, by the way. Really mad that Marvel canceled that book. But yeah. Also, I heard something Bendis had the tendency to steal other characters from other books, but like 
Like he put Squirgo in New Avengers. He put uh, Echo. Though Echo, I, I got to give an exception though because he did create Echo. And one thing he also got praised by Ben is he at least has had two of his characters appear in live action. Jessica Jones herself and Maria Hill. A character who half the time people don't like anyways because she's not a very nice person. Though, I got to admit this right off the bat. Maria Hill is a smoking hot woman. And one thing I praise my fraction for his run for Iron Man, at least he did something that no one ever, ever, ever did with the character. Actually have her have sex with one, one of the male characters of Marvel Universe. Who? Tony Stark. Yep. That actually happened. Where he had set where she had sex, Tony Stark had one night staying with him during Dark Reign. And I'm kinda like, Bendis, why couldn't you do that with one of the other characters? Like as far as I know, he never put in a relationship with anybody at all. That's one thing quite weird about Maria Hill. She has never been in a relationship with anybody. Jessica Jones, meanwhile, has married Luke Cage now for approximately 13 years. Yeah, they got married in New Avengers and number one. Now I want to talk about the one that came out for like uh, 2011 or the recent New Avengers and number one, the one for the third volume. I'm talking about the very first one. The one that came out in like 2000, I think it was like around 2006, I think it was, it was before, as far as I remember, I think it was just, be, it was before Civil War, the first one, that they got married, and of course, the priest of the ceremony is, a, is basically a Stan freaking Lee, which is awesome. Also, I gotta point this out though, Bendis started three relationships. One still continues this very day, that's okay, Jessica Jones, who's had a child. But that's the only one that actually still gets by the reference outside of Bennett's books. The only the only two relationships he started during his tenure were ignored by m m most of the other writers at Marvel. And that was Clint Barton, Jessica Drew. Yeah, he started his wrath the fear itself, but nobody did anything with that relationship. The only relationship he did anything with was he started a relationship... Oh, actually, he actually started three, three other relationships. Uh, there was the... Past Angel and Laura at the time was X-23. Now, now, now she's Wolverine, though. She's going back to Logan for some... X-23 for some stupid reason. And, of course, a good relationship that went nowhere. What relationship I'm talking about? Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, and Kitty Pride. Yeah, he kind of was people, one of the people who started that relationship... Actually, yeah, he was definitely the one who started that relationship. Him and Sam Humphreys was the only people who actually had to give a damn about the relationship. No one else bothered to bring up this relationship at all in anybody else's comic book. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, like, I think it was after Secret Wars for some strange reason, they broke up. Yeah, there is no reason why they broke up. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so that's it for this particular video. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. I probably I was thinking of doing a review of No Shadow of Re, but it's late, so I just just I just wanted to do this one. I'll probably get a chance to do it maybe tomorrow at best at this rate. All right, but until we see you in the next video, bye.